Now to part two of my conversation with our own Mary Calvi about her new novel of historical fiction. It's called If a Poem Could Live and Breathe, the story of Teddy Roosevelt's first love with a young woman named Alice Hathaway Lee. So we sat down at Roosevelt's childhood home in Manhattan to get the story behind the story that Mary believes changed American history. How did you get on the trail? How did this first come to your attention that there's something here. I think you know this, but I am what you call a nerd with capital N. <laughs> so I had a hunch. I'm blown away that you would have such a hunch about such a thing. If a man writes in his journal entry over and over and over about this woman he is completely in love with, don't tell me he's not treasuring those love letters and keeping them somewhere. And I just took one step after another after another, and then all of a sudden, X marks the spot. There was the treasure trove of letters. I couldn't believe it. I was nearly on the floor. The letters had been donated privately to Harvard University, and they were under uh, the family papers, and so they were there. Right there the whole time. I started the research on Alice. And when you start by looking at the woman in the relationship, you just centered everything around her. And that is why I believe I found a story that no one else had found before, because I thought to look at Alice. So the history books have dismissed her and disregarded her. Why do you think that is? For whatever reason, they didn't feel that Alice mattered, which is not the case at all. I believe she mattered so much that if it weren't for Alice, we may have a Theodore Roosevelt who was a scientist, but a man who may never have become the president. This one right here, yeah. darling baby. I've been studying hard all day. I am so happy that I hardly dare trust in my own happiness. Last Sunday evening seems almost like a dream. Goodbye, darling, you're loving. Thee. She called him Thee. Throughout, that's what you feel like you're in their world. And oh my goodness, I did feel like I was intruding many, many times. You're this determined, relentless reporter tracking down information. But you also have a full time job. Yeah. <laughs> you also have a family. You're first lady of Yonkers. You've got all this stuff going on. When on earth do you write? How does this happen? Some people do yoga, and some people paint. And for me, Historical research and writing is a getaway. And so I spent a lot of time really crafting her character, making her a symbol of the times, just to get people to understand what women were going through. I hope people just take a look at it. And maybe it offers us a new piece of research. We look at that time of his life to determine whether it was maybe more influential than people have thought. And be sure to see parts one and two of our conversation at CBSNewYork.com. One of Mary's other hopes is that it reminds us to write like handwriting. We're definitely losing something with all this texting and electronic communication. There's no record of what we say. Future generations won't have any idea what we're thinking. They won't be able to dig up stuff and write books about it either. So there's so much there. Right, and penmanship too. That too. That too, but that to get into someone's head like that in a story that she put together is a pretty mm -hmm. amazing it experience. Really is. Yeah, it check really it out. Is.